Cult of the Lamb has taken a while to cross the finish line with its updates, but is otherwise knocking it out of the park. Call me the one who waits because I've been anticipating each of these patches as they get announced, especially Relics of the Old Faith, which added some sorely missing additions to the game's dungeons. It's come a long way, and it's a game you have to actively try not to fall in love with. Between Riverboy's infectious soundtrack, dazzling color palettes, and the dangerously adorable villagers, you just can't take your eyes off of this thing. Although there was nothing that would leave a lasting gameplay impression, owed to the underwhelming combat loop and general feeling of being feature incomplete, it was very hard not to forgive it regardless. The massive monster has seen the light, sought repentance, and atoned for their sins in the form of that update I mentioned earlier, Relics of the Old Faith. That was part one of a two-part release to add more meat to the game's bones. No, the Don't Starve update doesn't count. Whereas Relics of the Old Faith focused on the combat side of things, Sins of the Flesh aims to add more content to the cult management. That's not to say the fighting is completely neglected here because there is a big new addition in the form of the blunderbuss, which is the first ranged weapon in the lamb's arsenal. But staying on track, what about the meat and potatoes of the sins of the flesh? What about all of the new cult management stuff? First off, you should know that lots of this update is not accessible until you beat three of the major bosses. So if, like me, you started a new save file to get a fresh start, it might be a little bit before you stumble across things you haven't seen. There's a new currency in the form of Sin, with its own progression path and everything. It's similar to a lot of the other interlocking mechanics in cults, that is to say, it's not the most sophisticated or deep. The base building in this game has always kind of substituted complexity for quantity. I'm not saying it isn't fun, just that this update doesn't uproot the entirety of the game's colony sin mechanics. Problems regarding your base won't ever plague your reputation as a ruler for eons, nor is there any special routes to unlocking a certain ending depending on how you manage everything. Most of your problems can be fixed as if you were strolling through your house and spot cleaning, for better or worse. Regarding Sin, essentially your villagers can now generate a resource that lets you purchase cosmetic upgrades for your temple, outfits, and other small things. There are multiple ways to do this, such as with a new ritual like the flower dance, or an upgraded confession booth which lets you generate sin or loyalty. You're also able to spend sin on what many consider the main feature of this update, mating. You can choose two compatible villagers to do the do and conceive an egg that has a combination of their traits. Considering the lamb's unable to mate himself and can only watch, I have a much different idea of what this update should have been nicknamed, but I digress. Making a ritualistic circle back to the combat, what's going on with the blunderbuss? Well, to put it bluntly, I was really worried this thing would feel clunky, slow, hard to aim, just a whole mess. Even if they have made the Crusades better through updates, there's definitely still some jank, particularly when you're trying to attack something directly above you, considering your sprite can't quite aim very far in vertical directions if you're not using a hammer. Fortunately, the blunderbuss proved fun to use. You get three, four when upgraded, shots, with a quick recharge time you have to stay on top of as every second you stay at full ammo is a second you could have spent pumping an enemy with lead. It's also got a nice weighty heavy attack that shoots in a thick vertical line. It's particularly deadly when combined with the golden fleece since that extra distance makes it that much harder for baddies to hurt you and tank your damage stacks. Unlike YouTube support, it's quick, responsive, and most importantly, fun. Which is why it's a shame that despite what the patch notes claim, there is a bug where this weapon might not spawn at all. At least not for a good long while. I started a new save file to try out Sins of the Flesh and when activating Quick Start, a mode that removes some cutscenes and tutorials from the early game, sword weapons wouldn't spawn. This was a known issue expressed by at least one other user before the patch, and it turns out that the way to remedy this is to actually do the tutorial by leaving quick start mode turned off. With this knowledge I started a new save again. Doing this got the sword to appear in Crusades, but now the blunderbuss wouldn't spawn until I defeated the final boss. It's not supposed to be gated behind the main story as far as I know, so this is either really bad RNG or some sort of bug. Considering the sword is my favorite weapon, it was annoying for sure, so here's hoping Massive Monster actually patches this out sooner rather than later. Since we're on the subject of weapons, I should let you know that while the dagger's heavy attack has been nerfed, it still absolutely shreds bigger enemies, particularly when it's been upgraded on the sermon tree. So if you were afraid this thing would be puny now, rest assured, it's too powerful to even be patched by the developers. Some of Cult of the Lamb's issues are so deep-rooted that it's hard to picture any update fixing them completely. Cult progression like loyalty levels become kind of meaningless 
meaningless towards the end game, save for when you're using a villager to respawn, and the roguelite part of the game still doesn't stand toe to toe with a lot of its genre neighbors. Yet for as big as some of these issues are, I still think it's a title you should absolutely make time for, because unlike its Twitter profile, it's a game filled with charm, love, and one of the best soundtracks in recent years. If you watched the recent documentary from Devolver on the development of Cult of the Lamb, you'll know they were heavily inspired by a game called Moonlighter, where you play as a shopkeep that balances selling items at his store by day and delving dungeons by night. Let me know if this is something you want me to make a video on, I think a lot of you would like it, and I'd love to cover it. Buh bye bye